All right, in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the Clash Detective available in Navisworks. Now, unlike the last one where we produced uh, an NWC file out of Revit, we're going to link directly to it um, from Navisworks. So in this instance here, I'm going to open a file, and uh, under the types of file here, you just select Revit, and there's the Asunda one we've been looking at as well. So let's open that again, and it'll just take a second. Now, what this is doing is opening up the Revit file. Uh, just out of interest, I also have the Revit file running uh, on the side here, so you can see the file live. So what we're going to do is run the Clash Detective, make a few mods, and uh, with a bit of luck, we should be able to fix those and retest. So let's grab this thing and move it again. Machine's running a bit slow. There we go. So this is the file. Now one of the things you'll notice is uh, the the background this time has a sky and some ground on it. And I suppose that's a, a sort of bit of a visual indication that you're working with a linked file. Uh, previously, it was all black in the background. So this would be similar to um, uh, a 3D view on Revit. So everything else pretty much looks the same. Nothing of any great significance. The lighting there is uh, is washing out a bit just because it's got the sunlight turned on. Uh, see if we can do anything about that. Uh, viewpoint, lighting. So... Yeah, full lights, whatever. Perhaps something would help there. If you have scene lights in there, it might work. Yeah, it's changing it a bit. Uh, headlight. Anyway, um, back to what we really want to do here. So back into the Home tab, and we're going to fire up the Clash Detective. So uh, the way the Clash Detective works is you set up um, a couple of tests. So currently it says there's no test to find. Incidentally, if you hover around with one of these tiles, you can clip it to the side just by doing that. Uh, you just put it over one of those icons, one of these guys here. So if you want it there or there or whatever. So let's put it here. Um, so currently it says there's no tests defined. So what we can do is add a test there. So we'll open that out a bit. And uh, we can name it. So I'm going to call this uh, test all. Yeah, maybe you can put a space in there. Like so. And what we want to do is check to see what kind of clashes exist across the model. So in this instance here, I'm going to check everything against everything. So we have a selection A and a selection B. And once we have both selections made, we can run the test. So if I just click on the Run Test button here, it'll go to work. And what's it found? Uh, 37 clashes exist in this one at the moment. So we can see there just bit by bit what they all are. So I have a couple of clashes on the staircase. Uh, what else we got? Bit of wall there and things like that. Once you've created this, um, you can export it and things like that as well. So under the report here, you can ask it what to, to put out. So report type current test, which is one we're running. Um, you can ask it to spit out some HTML and then write that report. So I'm going to again go back into my demo, uh, test all that HTML, click save, and uh, out it goes. So this will give you a record of what you've got. So back into here, this is the test all that HTML. Just a quick look at that. Uh, let's see, just grab that now. So here it is. And yeah, just item by item, you can see what's happening there. So element IDs, layers, and all that kind of stuff. So that's all there. So let's just get rid of that and minimize that. Now, uh, that's one test. And uh, again, let's have a quick look at the results. Yeah, a lot of interference. So there's a couple of um, things here. First of all, these reports can get very big. And it makes sense to try and go subsystem against subsystem or system against system, whatever way you want to do it. Now, currently, I've got an internal wall hitting the floor. And I want to see really how many times is this actually happening. So what I'm going to do now is add another test, and um, so I'm going to call this test, let's don't get that live, internal walls to floor. So I'm just calling this test internal walls to floor. Uh, it's a new test, you can see there that test was actually run, and you can see all the results. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, um, well, first of all, stand a, sorry, the selection A, ground floor, and let's get the walls, actually let's just grab all of them, and I'll run these against 
everything on the first floor. Okay, so this is the walls against floors. And if I run this test, it's now showing me that one we were just looking at. And this is another clash. So it's another piece of wall, another piece of wall, another piece of wall right there. So this time we got five tests. Now the advantages of running it this way is that what we can do is um, then go back into our Revit file and make any necessary adjustments. So what we typically do is go into our Revit file. Um, let's see what's the handiest way to get at this. Um, so 3D view, throw on a section box. And there it is. Let's push this back a bit. And uh, there's our, our, one of our problems right there, and another one beside it. So why don't I just attach top base to this piece of floor, like this. And that should be, yeah, I should be dealing with it. And if it doesn't, we'll figure out what we need to do then next. So there we go, that's that done. I'm gonna save this file here. And uh, we can rerun the test. So there we go. Uh, let's see, rerun the test here. And if I've done everything right, it should actually make a difference. But it doesn't seem to be doing that. So I've done something wrong. Um, it's probably down to having too many files open at the same time. So I probably need to refresh my links. So I'm able to do that. So there you go, it's refreshing the Revit. So I'll give it a chance to run that. And with a bit of luck, I'll rerun it again. So I'm trying to do things too fast here. So hopefully it's going to rerun that test. Uh, there's the one we were looking at, rerun that. And we now have these ones here. So these have now been clicked into the resolved side here. So once you have those live links running, it'll tell you where your problems are and what's been fixed and what hasn't. So we can see here, I've still got a problem on that piece of wall back there and there. So let's just do this one more time. There's a piece of wall there, attach top base. That was the ceiling, which was a bad idea. So grab that, attach top base, get the floor. Um, we had another one over on the other side, so I'm able to spin this about and push this back. There's another one. So attach top base, grab the floor. And uh, I can't remember where the other one was. So this is where we've done this one. Ah, that's it, the staircase. So the staircase was the last one. So back into Revit, uh, let's spin it around, go find the staircase, push it back a bit. There we go. There's our problem. And again, attached to the floor. So that should hopefully have cleared it up. Hit the save button, uh, get rid of Revit, go back to Navisworks, refresh our link, give it a second to do that. And once that has been refreshed, what we can do is uh, rerun the test. And with a bit of luck, our clashes will all be resolved. So that should be happy. Rerun the test. Oh, bet you I've hit the wrong button again. Yeah, didn't only did the first one. That's the one I want to rerun. And uh, I click rerun there. And now they're all resolved. So that's pretty good. Uh, we can also see that the alt, alt has come down as well. So we've resolved 27. How that's come about, I don't know. Uh, obviously, by some of the connections, it's resolved a few other issues. So that's it for clash detection um, in a nutshell. Obviously, there's more to it than that, but it's a good starting point. Thank you very much.